Gemini, how are you? It's me, LB. Welcome to the Untitled Tarot. I laid out your spread this week with the Dreams of Gaia Oracle mixed with the Sacred Forest Oracle. This is a really interesting spread that I got about halfway through and I went, this is special. This is a special kind of read. As a reader, it's one of those spreads that you just kind of have to sink your teeth in because it's so interesting to you. So I'm excited to share it. Thank you for letting me read it. Let's pray and we'll just get right on into it. Father God, thank you for bringing me and Gemini in for this reading. I ask that you give me wisdom, clarity, and discernment to deliver these messages accurately for Gemini's highest of love, light, alignment, and assignment. We praise you. We love you. We thank you always. We give you all the glory and the honor for these messages. To the utmost high, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, the first card coming out for you, Gemini, is chaos. It's the storm spirit. It's a hell of a card to start out with. But you have it followed up by this three of air. So when I first pulled these, it felt as if you were in the process of studying something, researching something. And when you opened up this book, when you started diving into a particular topic or practice or belief system, whatever it is, it's almost like Pandora's box. You sort of release this storm spirit. You release this chaos energy maybe you're studying chaos magic but there is something about that the intensity of the information that is coming through how electric or, or activating it is for you when i looked at the cards again i did start to see this chaos spirit sort of circling around you so it's kind of a matter of uh, the chicken or the egg perhaps you've been noticing gemini that the energy around you or the energy within the collective has been extra chaotic. Maybe you're picking up on some astral stuff. Maybe it's the solar flares. Maybe it's the Schumann. Maybe it's, you know, <coughs> excuse me, like sociopolitical stuff. But you're definitely feeling a disturbance in the force. Maybe that's the thing that sort of sprung you into action going, I need to understand sort of the mechanics behind this energy more. How energy works. How to alchemize it. Sort of like, I call it playing 20 questions with God. And you go, but what about this? And well, how does that work? And you sort of end up going down a wormhole. So again, it's the chicken or the egg. This energy could have inspired you to start doing more research, doing more independent study. And as you open up this book, you almost get more than you were bargaining for. It's almost as if you are sort of taking this master class in, in chaos magic or in chaos energy, the ecosystem of how energy works. You have Pegasus coming up next transcending and so the more you dive into this energy gemini the more excited you seem to be getting it says transcendence but and it also feels very much like enlightenment it's like these light bulbs going off in your head these connections you're making oh wow so that it's like being able to see behind the magic curtain and not for nothing but this storm spirit do you see the man in, in the background i always call this my zeus card and you also have Pegasus right here. And as I was laying out your cards, I was watching Boardwalk Empire because I've been binge watching it, as one does. And I heard one of the characters say, blah, 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 the Artemis Club. So there might be an Easter egg. There might be something in there for you about Hellenistic traditions, um, Greek Roman pantheons. There might be something in that for you. I don't want to sit in that energy for too long. But I mean, when I see three, <laughs> when I see three. Greek and, and, and Roman gods um, sort of present themselves in a matter of 35 seconds. Like, I have to make note of that, you know, but we're not going to sit in that energy too long. Regardless, the more you're digging into this energy, it's like the more you become enlightened, the more you become illuminated. And I just see you sort of falling into this field of research or study. Now, as you're doing that, you have this card coming out next. And so there seems to be a point in your study or in your research, or at the very least, a point in your understanding where there is a very obvious block. I see this character here. See how his hand is almost saying, okay, Gemini, that's enough. Like you cannot go farther than here until, and you're going until what? How do I get past this barrier? Like how do I get to the rest of the information and it has to do something with these two characters right here so when i first pulled it i went oh no gemini has to go into battle but that's not quite that's not quite what it is what i am distinctly and very clearly hearing right now now in my ear is all knowledge isn't free 
all knowledge isn't free. There is almost much like sort of Odin, how Odin had to sacrifice himself in order to gain access to the world, the universal knowledge of all different things. You too sort of have to make a sacrifice in order to gain knowledge of what? It has to do with these swords. When I'm looking at them, I notice that this sword right here, it's illuminated. It's golden. It's sort of like this solar, this life force energy. And I thought that this black sword was blocking it. But when I looked closer, I realized that there are water droplets coming from it. And so <clears throat> there's something here, Gemini, about there is a sacrifice needed if you want to figure out how to channel life force energy into water what is water it is intuition yes occult knowledge but it is also emotion emotion energy in motion it's sort of like the initiation of becoming a magician of sorts if you want to learn gemini how to channel pure life force energy in motion to create growth there is a sacrifice required of you now, <laughs> I was just like about to go on a whole other thread and I'm like reeling myself back in. Now, this is where things get kind of interesting. This is the Bluebell Fairy. And this is really confirming what I was just saying before. It says gratitude here, right? And Bluebells do talk a lot about humility. They talk about gratitude. Um, sometimes they can even talk about love. What's interesting here is this fairy is actually levitating. She's not actually touching the bluebells. And while bluebells do have a significant amount of positive symbolism, there is also quite a bit of lore about bluebells and how they actually can be unlucky. There, there's lores that will tell you that if a child plucks a bluebell, they will never return home. Or if an adult plucks a bluebell and, and takes it, that there will be some kind of woodland nymph or goblin that will follow it like there's a there's a spiritual attachment to it that they'll have like after they take it and that's part of this levitation that right as you are about to go okay what's the sacrifice like right as you're about to lean in you seem to be sort of suctioned up it's like a little kid who you don't want um like running across the floor you just mopped and you sort of pick them up and they're kicking their legs it's a little bit it's a little bit like that and it seems to be happening from this queen of water and this refuge card. So right as you're, again, about to lean into this, into this battle, lean into this sacrifice, you sort of get pulled out of it. So maybe you're being pulled out of that meditation or the way you access that information is all of a sudden blocked to you or you get kind of thrown out of that trance. Like there, there is something about that that you are forcibly removed from this location something else <clears throat> that i thought was really interesting see this pegasus card again this transcendent i was looking at it and i go why do you look so familiar to me and i realized that this is the image that's on the back of all of these cards and so there's something funny here gemini about when you first go to access this knowledge and you're blocked off from it unless you make a sacrifice it's sort of like you're just seeing the back side of this card, right? It's like there's no there's no more information. There's no context here. You can only draw from it from what you can see from it. But when part of the reason you're being plucked and pulled is for your safety or to give you an extra moment to be able to turn that situation over, look at the other side of it and gain more context. And it's funny because when I pulled this card before, I noticed this owl here. I don't know what you can see it in my camera, but his eyes are like, they look like these glasses. They're like really, really big. Almost as if when you started exploring this information in the first place, Gemini, there was an owl or there was a guide or there was an aspect of your spirit team, maybe even an aspect of yourself that is going, hey, this is going to be Pandora's box if you open up this book. Like this might be outside of your bailiwick with Al's talking a lot about wisdom like there might even be something like against your better judgment you started exploring it anyway knowing oh this is gonna throw me down a rabbit hole or there's a lot more here than I'm used to right like so there's been an energy with you that's kind of been nudging you saying 
Gemini, are you sure? Are you sure? Because you're not really seeing the context clues on the back of this card. But you aren't noticing it. You're going, wow, like, I want to be the magician. Like, I want to learn these secrets. Like, I want to figure out how to do this. And right as you go to touch it, they just pluck your ass up. And you're just left there kind of just, like, swinging your feet, not really understanding. But they're putting you in refuge, right? See how it's, it almost feels like this character is the same as her and you're sort of locked in this little ball it is for your protection to again at least <clears throat> it's almost about conform consent gemini but if you're going to make this decision through your own free will you absolutely can do that because you have free will if you want to make that sacrifice to gain access to whatever this power or this knowledge or this process is okay but you should have informed consent like you should have the rest of the information now this owl spirit appears again <clears throat> again pulling in a little bit of that like athena energy i'm wondering if the person who created this deck is like a hellenistic pagan questions for my mind but she seems to be coming forward wanting to have a conversation with you saying gemini let's pull back for a second I know you're swinging your feet. You're a little pissed off and confused, but let's pull back. Let's consult. I'm going to just start the Oracle. Let's consult the Oracle. Like let's consult our wisdom. Are you sure that you want to do this? You have the blue bird. You have this happiness card coming out too. And she seems to have this question for you going, Gemini, I know that this is like deeply curious and interesting to you, but stop for a moment and think if this path, um, if this research, if the attainment, the obtainment of this information, is it actually going to make you happy? Let's think past the decision. Let's think past the point where you're channeling all of this energy and this info. In the long run, is going down this path or this school of thought or this storyline, this belief system, is that going to be the thing that's going to make you happy? Because... If there's a question in your mind that perhaps it will not, we might have something else in store for you. And this is or this energy of like deal making, negotiation, stuff like that is starting to come in. And someone who was kind of pre-law in college and a tarot reader now, like, you know, I love spiritual like negotiations and spirit contracts and just the the laws, right? It's like sort of the laws that go into this are very interesting to me. And it also makes sense because in a universe of, you know, innumerable possibilities and timelines and belief systems and different pantheons or spirits you could work with and work that you can do, it's like there there is shifting sands, like it does sort of change the butterfly effect or the ripple effect of what you may be doing after that decision, what experiences you may have both spiritually and practically as a result of those decisions. And so this Al character comes forward and says, just really take a moment and think, Gemini, if that's going to make you the happiest. Because if there is a question in your mind that it may not, we have another option for you. This is an Ace of Wands. And see how there's this beautiful golden egg and there's this spider in here? Spiders, for me, symbolize the magician with their webs talking a lot about the interconnectivity of things, about manifestations, about networks, about support systems, all of it. And so they're saying... Gemini, we have something else. We have another deal for you. We have another option for you to consider. It's this golden egg. It's a different way to be the magician. It's the same deal that this character was trying to make with you, but it's slightly different. It's sort of like when you're shopping between streaming services, right? It's like comparing Netflix and, and HBO Max. At the end of the day, it's the same deal. It's streaming services, you know, um, documentaries, series, movies. But the type of content that's available is different. This is important. The price of the streaming services is different. You have access to different things depending on which one you have, right? Um... And I hear you asking me in the ether, well, why can't I have both? You probably can, but there seems to be something significant about the sacrifice that is made. And perhaps, again, it has to do with this bluebell thing, Gemini, that once you pluck the bluebell, you cannot take it back, right? It's, it's just like the lore. If an adult takes one, 
then that woodland goblin will be with them forever. Like there's something about once you make that sacrifice, you can't take it back. Once you have access to this knowledge, you can't just sit on it. You then you have to use it. Like there's again, it's spiritual it's spiritual contract law in and of itself. And this is a similar deal, but it comes with all different situations, support systems, but you still get to be the magician. You have emotion and intellect coming up next. And so this is a big part of it. Perhaps something that is fascinating to you about sort of this original school of thought or study that you're exploring is because it combines, again, water and life force energy. Light here, same thing as electricity. It's also symbolic of wisdom. It's also symbolic of downloads, revelation, information. This is what is included in this other deal for you you do get to become the magician just in a different way you do have access to the interconnectivity of all things you do have a support system that will be available for you and you do get to utilize both your emotion and your intellect at the same time and so the standing stones comes up next this passage card I did a reading, I want to say it was a week or two ago, I don't remember who it was for, I'm inclined to say it was for Capricorn, but I could be wrong, and it was called Your Mission Should You Choose to Accept It, and there's a little bit of that energy here too, if you are willing, Gemini, if you would rather take this deal, then you will move through this entry point, you will be kind of initiated into this deal instead and then the king of fire comes out. You will make it through the passageway and you will become the king of fire. You will become life force energy in and of itself, which for some reason feels, the energy feels very pure to me. It's almost like instead of just channeling it through sort of a narrow passageway in order to create like a small amount of growth, you sort of get to become much more expansive. You get to become life force energy. You get to shine it everywhere. It's not as contained. It's really interesting. And then we have this three of pentacles coming out. And so Gemini, if you, if you decide to move through this passageway, you actually, as this new form of the magician, come forward as this king of fire. And this is the type of assistance that you have now. Originally, the assistance that you would have needed would have been of a darker frequency, which is cool. You know I'm cool with that, but it's of a darker frequency. It might even be of a denser frequency. It's also water energy, similar to the moon, right? Whereas instead, the new support that's going to be available for you is much more earthy. It's not water energy. It's earth energy. Speaking of the moon, I did notice on this, this queen of water. See how there's these symbols of the moon? I'm wondering, Gemini, if you perhaps have... There's something about your astrological placements for some of you that seems to be sticking out. Like, for instance, you may have, you may be a Gemini sun, but you might have like a Cancer moon because there's a crab here. You might have a Cancer moon and maybe you have a fire rising because the rising sign is oftentimes how the world sees you, how you show up in the world. And so I'm wondering if you're like a Gemini sun and a Cancer moon with like a Sagittarius or a Leo rising. I know that's funny. I don't normally drop astro placements, but it does seem to be... It does seem to be important for some reason. You'll come into more of your rising sign. I don't know. Regardless, I don't want to digress too much. The support that will be available for you, it won't be of dark and water. It will also be of light, but it will be of earth. And you notice how much growth is around this character as opposed to just this tiny patch right here, right? And then we have stability coming out. Gemini, you may find that you prefer this support system. You may find that you prefer to sit as this new magician, as this king of fire, the carrier of life force energy. You may find it much more stabilizing, much more pleasurable for you. And I like, again, in sort of just like these three flowers, here she is, all of these kind of light balloons. And it's so easy for her to just sort of breathe them into existence and kind of cast them out, almost like bottles like a note in a bottle in the sea there's also these swans down here which lately they've really bring been bringing forward swans as less about romantic love and more about 
protecting something that you love. And I think this is why you got alley-ooped out of these bluebells. I think that's why whoever and whatever this owl spirit character represents for you, they love you very much. They want you to be happy. It's almost like your happiness is the most important thing. Like they are here to help you achieve happiness, not just power or success, but like true, true happiness. They want you to be on the most beneficial timeline or belief system or path that you possibly can be. And you will find Gemini, if you sit, if you sit on it and you really think about it and feel into the energy, that this will be much more pleasurable for you. It allows you, similar to the other deal, to get everything that like you're sort of aiming for, but in a way that is much more grounded, much more expansive. It actually promotes more growth for you. And the important thing here is, is it doesn't require you to make a significant sacrifice. It's almost as if you don't need to make that sacrifice in order to gain access to this information if you just go through a different medium to get it, right? Because the last card in your reading is this Eight of Cups. And this for me really just talks about alignment and openness and balanced masculine energy, balanced action, active energy. All of the energy centers are aligned with these dolphins here. It talks a lot about telepathy, psychic expansion, but dolphins also bring through an incredible amount of like positive karmic energy as well. And so in the end, if you sit and really feel into the energy, Gemini, you may find that this deal is a much cushier one for you and you end up much happier and stable in the end. So remember this trust card on the bottom of the deck from the beginning. So it's very, it's very interesting to me, Gemini. You'll have to let me know what's going on. I am going to go do an extended to this reading because I have to know how this continues to play out. So if you're interested in your extended reading, if you're interested in your monthly reading for May, I'm going to put those as the top two links in the description box for you. The Worker Bee Mystery School for Intuitives is still taking on new students for the month of May. So you can check us out on Patreon if you want. And if you're interested in a personal reading or intuitive coaching, you can book with me through my website. I love you so much, Gemini. Thank you for being here. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.